Senator Jeff Merkley here. 2023 has been a busy year, and as it draws to a close, I'm reflecting on 23 of the things that we have accomplished. Number one, we got the Safer Banking Act, a bill to make sure all legal cannabis businesses can access standard financial services they need to keep their employees and communities safe, passed out of the Senate Banking Committee for the first time. Number two, I took a stand against the TSA's use of facial recognition in airports. The TSA's first step in establishing a national surveillance state that puts our freedom and democracy at risk. And I introduced the Bipartisan Traveler Privacy Protection Act to stop the surveillance state in its tracks. Number three, our fantastic constituent services team helped hundreds of Oregonians with all kinds of challenges, getting folks their delayed tax refunds, expediting their passports, making sure our veterans receive the medals and recognition they earned with their service, and so much more. Number four, I held the first ever series of hearings on the toxic effects of plastics and potential solutions, introduced the Break Free from Plastic Pollution Act, and worked to eliminate plastic pollution in our national parks. Number five, the Senate confirmed Oregon's own judge, Adrian Nelson, to be a U.S. District Judge for the District of Oregon. Number six, I worked with Paris Hilton and advocates to continue the call to pass my Bipartisan Stop Institutional Child Abuse Act to end abuse in dangerous youth residential treatment programs. Number seven, I welcomed U.S. Interior Secretary Halland to Oregon, where he met with tribal leaders from Oregon's nine federally recognized tribes and visited an Oregon treasure, Crater Lake National Park. Number eight, the CDC implemented my legislation creating an Office of Rural Health to better address the unique health care challenges in our rural communities. One's access to quality care should not depend on one's zip code. Number nine, I helped ensure late Navy veteran Martin Cerezo was laid to rest in Willamette National Cemetery with full honors and co-sponsored a bill to establish a commission to investigate the historic and ongoing impact of discriminatory military policies on LGBTQ plus service members and veterans. Number 10, I fulfilled Senator Hatfield's Opal Creek promise to provide $15 million in funding that will help communities in the Santa Am Canyon region recover from wildfires and support long-term economic development in Marion County. Number 11, I fought for the integrity of our democratic process, leading the successful opposition to an online election betting casino and introduced the Ethics Act to ban members of Congress and their families from corruptly trading stocks. Number 12, I met with community members in Morrow and Umatill counties about the nitrate contamination of their well water and then secured federal funding for those counties to deliver clean water solutions. And 13, Speaking of clean water, I secured and celebrated a $28 million federal investment for a much-needed water treatment facility for the Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs. Number 14, the Senate unanimously passed my bipartisan Maternal and Child Health Stillbirth Prevention Act to address the silent stillbirth crisis that is devastating families and parents. 15, I pushed Team Biden to quit greenlighting new fossil fuel projects, including LNG, liquefied fossil gas, terminals. As highlighted at COP28, we can only stop climate chaos by ending the era of fossil energy. Number 16, as chair of the Interior Appropriations Committee, I addressed Oregon's wildfire crisis from two angles, funding for fighting fires and for forest management to decrease the risk of fire. I also introduced bills to make sure communities have the resources they need to recover from wildfires and deal with the impact of wildfire smoke. Number 17, I continued investments for Oregon's irrigation piping projects. That investment now totals nearly $200 million because every drop of water is so valuable given climate change. Number 18, I led legislation to ban special college admission preferences for rich donors and the children of alumni. Ironically, the Supreme Court banned preferences for disadvantaged students, but kept those preferences for the most advantaged students. That is not just. Number 19, at my town halls in Oregon's 36 counties, the top topic was the lack of affordable housing. To address that crisis, I secured grants for affordable housing across the state, including grants to reduce youth homelessness. I also introduced a bill to ban hedge funds from owning single-family houses. Houses should be homes for families, not profit centers for Wall Street. Number 20, I helped secure a $52 million USDA seafood purchasing agreement to support West Coast fishing communities and seafood processors. 
Number 21, this year's investment in the Klamath Basin, made possible by the bipartisan infrastructure law and by my work on the Senate Appropriations Spending Committee, totaled about $50 million to address water quality in the river and the lake, fish survival, and drought resiliency for the region. Number 22, on the international front, I pushed implementation of the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act to stop the import of products from slave labor. I amplified opposition to China's blackmailing of U.S. citizens and companies. I supported funding Ukraine to defend against Russian invasion. I called for a ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war. And I promoted U.S. war legacy programs addressing cluster munitions and Agent Orange in Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. In addition, I proposed and participated in a congressional delegation to Guatemala to prevent the right-wing establishment from nullifying the legitimate presidential election of a reformer against corruption. Number 23, and finally, thanks to the CHIPS and Science Act, two national tech hubs are headed to Oregon, a huge opportunity to strengthen manufacturing and advance technological innovation with good paying jobs right here at home. Those are just 23 of the things I've gotten done in 2023. None of this would be possible without my incredible team and without all of you. Thank you for being partners in making Oregon and the world a better place. Let's build on this momentum in 2024.